So I came in in 2018, did just those little short meetings, and then he said, you know, you need to come back and help the government trying to fight the drugs off the street. And I said, okay, let me just go back and think about it. I was the executive director of a drug and alcohol re rehab at the time. My whole focus was like, would Fiji consider a drug and alcohol rehab in the country? Would that be a possibility? Yes. <clears throat> when I came in in 2018, like I said, there was nobody took accountability. Nobody took responsibility to say, we do have a problem. We need action. Nobody did that at that time. Was it being hidden? Yes. Yes, it was. Do you know why? Oh, I'm not even quite sure. And the thing is... But you couldn't get data? No. Couldn't get, get to know how bad it is, but no. on the ground, when you spoke to people, they yeah. told you how bad it was. Yes, definitely. So when I came back in 2019, the first thing I needed to do was, everybody's saying they have, we have a drug problem, but there was nothing, there was no significant data to tell us, okay, do we really have a bad problem? Yeah. So what we did, the, initially the first four weeks, going out and just did a survey, data collection. Man, I wasn't ready for the information that I got at that time. What did you find out? I found, uh, so we did 53 people collectively as a whole, 53 people, and they were from Suba, Nosori, to the west, Vanua Lebu, uh, Lambasa, even to Obalau, Lebuka. They were all different people, just hand-picked. Um, and they were from four, uh, sorry, 19 to 50 years old. And then obviously asking them from your community, in your area, what do you see? What are some of the problems? What drugs, when I say, when I talk about drugs, what drugs comes up for you? So I was only ready for marijuana, you know, and that was it. Nah, they were saying there's cocaine, there's crystal meth, there's heroin. That got me really stirred because it's like, wow, heroin's in this country? Didn't even know heroin was here. Um, ecstasy, LSD, so they listed all these drugs, which I didn't even know. And then the people that, because I created the dark, the, the, the survey to dig deeper. So you don't just give me information. I need to know if you're a user, how old were you when you started using? Why did you start using? Um, like how much is this drug costing you a week? How are you funding this? How are you using this? Are you smoking it intravenous or snorting it? Yeah. That was what, what did you find out based on that? Yeah, so out of 53, 17, yeah, 17 or 20 of them, all users, at least five, oh man, that was a huge number. It was a huge number, even deal. So there was a whole different scope of these young people. Majority of them were intravenous because they, it's either crystal meth that they shoot or heroin that they shoot. Just to sit down and you hear their story, why they started, when did they start, how did they get themselves into this mess? Yeah, the youngest person, obviously, that we interviewed, he was 11 years old and he was shooting. He was actually doing yeah, intravenous. And, and this 11-year-old was from Suva? From Suva, yeah. From Suva, where was he getting the drug from? He, <laughs> it can be anywhere. So he's, he said it's so easy for him to get it. And for me, it was like, how can you possibly say it's so easy for you to get it? Where did he get the money from? That's the thing. So he was on the street. So either he robbed, steal, or he sold himself. Now going it. back to when I discussed about, and you used meth before. Yeah. When you are in that situation, yeah. uh, you could do anything yeah. to get that hit? Yeah. Even if you took a life? There is a certain extent where you can wave your conscience gets in, whether you want to take a life or not. But when you're in that rage, when you're in that meth rage, nothing, you don't care. You don't really care if it's your relative standing in front of you. Yeah. And that's how bad it is. So for these, for the 11 year old that you interviewed, yeah. was he left on the streets by his parents? Just to hear his story, he said um, he was sent from one of the maritime islands to come in school, stayed with the family here in urban areas, obviously in Suva, um, and then abuse happened within the home, so he didn't feel safe. For him, it was safer to go on the streets and meet up with the young people. 
And that's how it was with him. It's just so sad. And you think, why couldn't you go back home to your parents, you know? Um, don't they meet you? And he said, no, I'm okay. I'm all right. Yeah. And it's very appealing, these, these people, when they're trying to sell it. And, you know, for him um, to use, so he would literally be a runner. He would run and use at the same time, which is... Oh, so he's a, he's a peddler as well. Yeah, yeah. And they would use the young people to target other young people. So you, you're seeing a pattern where young people uh, yeah. are introduced to yes. these highly addictive drugs. Yeah. Then, of course, they need it. Yeah. Then they have to work for the dealer yeah. to continue to get their shot. Yeah. How bad is that? How, how, how many young people are involved in these kind of situations? All you got to look at is um, how many young people do we see on the streets? From those, one in three at least are that. One in three from those. Now, think about it. After we did the survey to see how bad it was, we need to do a mapping. How would we do a plan of attack? How would we do this not just in the urban areas, but obviously in the rural areas as well? And see if there is an urban shift between the two. Yes, there was. So for us to go out, like we, we have direct delivered to over 120,000 people here in Fiji. That's a lot. That's quite a lot. And the thing is, through those workshop or, you know, just going on the streets, talking to people, whatever it may be, people would come up then. Because the thing is, when we do the drug awareness, we share our survival stories. We share our stories. And it is on that platform people come forward and start talking to us about everything. Um, half of the time we're not even ready. Some of the intel are so, wow, so confronting that you wouldn't even think it's happening here, but it is here. Yeah.